Good morning, this is Rattlesnake Canyon, and this hike's come to a premature end since the stream bed here seems to have come to a series of cliffs that all go straight down, and I can't see a way around other than going back up out of here. So, I'm going to break here and talk some anime. Megazone 2-3 Megazone 2-3 was a landmark sci-fi OVA from 1985. Historically, it holds the distinction of being the second anime made for sale directly to home video after Dallas, and the first to be financially successful at it. Shogo is a young man living in Tokyo. When he's not working at McDonald's, he's a biker who rebels at authority, something that's become a bit of an anime cliché since then. Shogo likes speed and doesn't mind starting his day with a police chase. One day, he runs into a pretty girl. Actually, he narrowly misses running into her, but ever on the make, he uses the opportunity to give her a lift and get her phone number. Yui is a backup dancer, and soon they're lovers. At almost the same time, one of Shogo's friends shows off a spectacular new bike he, uh, borrowed without permission from his top-secret government employer. It carries the unknown name Bahamud, but it'll end up being known as a garland. It turns out that bike is really important to some very serious and powerful people, and in the fracas, Shogo ends up with a bike. Both the military and the police want that bike back, and during the chase, Shogo discovers it has some remarkable abilities. It can leap over cars, it has sensors that can look through walls, and it can even transform into a humanoid mecha with some pretty impressive weaponry. One of Yui's roommates, Tomoe, thinks that bike is the perfect special effect to make her debut sci-fi film, starring Yui and Shogo, and the bike, of course. That maybe exposes Shogo and the bike don't need. It seems that bike will give him access to places and things that powerful people don't want him to know about. A handsome military officer known as BD is going to become Shogo's nemesis as the military seeks to reclaim their superbike and there'll be a couple of fights and a couple of serious conversations, too. All this is told with a very musical soundtrack sung by Eve, the idol sensation. Eve is always on TV and the radio to provide background music for just about every scene. Megazone 2-3 was originally conceived of as a TV series, and as such, the story is very busy, so the characters get shortchanged on development a bit. Megazone 2-3 is a mystery and a love story. The mystery begins with the secret behind this amazing motorcycle. The more Shogo investigates, the greater the conspiracy seems, and the Garland itself gives him access to information he and his fellow citizens weren't supposed to learn. Not that he has much luck spreading the word. The romance is between Shogo and Yui, of course. Late in the story, they participate in a hot sex scene that's unique in both visuals and dialogue. Shogo seems invisible in it, allowing the artist to concentrate on Yui. Incongruously, the scene is used for a voiceover of a conversation about the plot's mysteries up until then. Not your usual pillow talk. Megazone 2-3 is more sexually liberated than most anime on TV before it, where young singles no longer have to exchange just soulful looks. But it's not outright slutty. When originally released, Megazone 2-3 wasn't billed as Part 1, but the OVA didn't really end the story either. It clearly had room for a sequel, which I'll get to in a minute. Megazone 2-3's art style is hand-drawn, of course, and it shows its age a bit these days. But I still like the original character designs. The animation can look very nice in some action scenes, though it cuts a few corners on exposition in the middle. A decade into computer-rated animation, we tend to forget how hard it was to animate camera movement in the old days, such as when we follow Shogo riding his bike around a corner. The director was Noboru Ishigura, who worked on Macros and Orgus, and later The Legend of Galactic Heroes. In the old days, I gave the original Megazone 2-3 OVA four stars for an original plot with some surprises and animation that was better than TV series, if still a bit less than a movie. I confess I didn't find its perplexed hero, Shogo, very likable. The whole thing looks 25 years older today. So do I. Okay, now I want to talk about the Megazone 2-3 sequels, parts 2 and 3. Spoilers are inevitable.
The second Megazone 2-3 OVA takes place six months after the original story. Shogo's still the hero. He's a fugitive now, framed for the murder of Tomoe, but he's really wanted for the secrets that he's learned. That the city he lives in is really a huge enclosed spaceship that's run by a giant computer, Bahamut, and that the military, led by an ambitious officer, BD, recently took control of that computer to fight another approaching spaceship. But the old computer, personified by the virtual singer Eve, is still alive someplace. Shogo has assembled a gang of biker buddies to take on the military with the hope of restoring the computer's old program. He's reunited with his old girlfriend, Yui, who he hasn't seen since the events that ended the first OVA. Together, that gang of misfits sets off to change the world. While the first OVA was full of plot, nothing much happens in part two, even though it's the same 80 minutes running time. It's not that it doesn't have any action, but it's all mostly an extended skirmish between the military and Shogar's biker buddies. What plots there is never really made a whole lot of sense to me. For some reason, I've always associated the ascension of bikers in this OVA to the post-Akira anime world. But checking the dates, apparently this came out just before Akira. I hate it when my memory is contradicted by the facts. And when I took his gun, that cop's face looked like a blowfish caught in a net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes you feel good, don't it? <laughs> I waited, but you never came back for me. What happened? The reason I didn't go back to your place, what would have been the point of both of us getting stuck in the mess I was... You probably noticed the radically different art and character designs, an entirely new look. Shogo and Yui even have different hair color, and Shogo even has a new Japanese voice actor this time around. I didn't think the new designs were an improvement, nor did it help continuity. That's really emblematic of the changes in anime art style that happened at the start of the 90s. The old thick line, rounded character art was replaced by a more angular and thin line style that's continued through today. An equally extreme example is what Sunrise did with their reboot of the Dirty Pair TV series in the 90s. The art isn't all that's changed about Part 2. The new director, Ichiro Itano, is probably best known for Gantz or his more recent work on Blast Rider. Megazone 2-3 Part 2 is more bloody and gory than its predecessor. The approaching spaceship, which we're told is just another human colony, apparently can cause 2-3's own technology to attack like tentacles, and it seems to enjoy tearing people apart. God knows how this technology works. It manages to imbue ordinary wires and tubes with muscular systems. The language in Part 2 is also more vulgar than in the first OVA. It does, however, feature songs by the virtual pop idol Eve again. Eve's the only returning character whose appearance didn't change much. Okay, one major spoiler here. You didn't use father. <laughs> The computer, Adam, is supposed to decide if the people on 2-3 are worthy to return to Earth, or if they'll simply choose the same old violent path that Earth's previous destruction was caused by. So, it decides it likes the bikers better than the military, because the bikers like to fight soldiers, while the soldiers like to fight bikers. In terms of proclivity for violence, this seems a distinction without a difference. These aren't flower children, they're a violent bike gang. This irony is highlighted when, right after Eve and Shoujo finish a talk about how Adam wants to exclude violence from the New World, BD appears, and Shogo charges right at him and starts a fight. Meanwhile, the computer decides to kill off all the non-combatants, the Megazones, peaceful civilian population, while Eve thoughtfully sings them a consolation song. Really? I give Megazone 2-3 Part 2 just two and a half stars. I found it a real disappointment. The final Megazone 2-3 OVAs were made several years after Part 2. Megazone 2-3 Part 3 was originally released in two separate OVA parts. We used to call them A and B. At first, it's a little hard to see the relationship of this new OVA to the first two. The actual Megazone of the title was destroyed at the end of the second OVA, and we're now on Earth, and we've moved well into the future. There's now one big, modern, thriving, enclosed city called Eden that resembles 1990. One thing that hasn't changed is Eve. The virtual singing idol is still cranking out the hits, though this time everyone knows she's just a computer simulation. She's just a shadow of her old self, though. 
And we still have bikers. Specifically, the young man Eiji is this show's hero. In addition to terrorizing the neighbors by riding the motorcycle down the hallway, he's a top gun at video games, and also a wheat net hacker, which puts him on the radar of two of the city's biggest rival corporations. EX runs the city's old-school data network. They spend a lot of time protecting their network from net jackers such as AG. They even have an armed squad of net police on flying bikes. Apparently it's easier to track down hackers if the whole world is only one city. EX wants to recruit AG and his skills to work for them. Orange makes the badass video game that AG is so good at, specifically an arcade-style space shooter game called, I kid you not, Hard On. Orange is actually using the game to find elite hackers like AG to recruit for their own work. AG soon picks up the pretty row who works at the game arcade. Other than providing the mandatory love interest for the OVA, she doesn't really have a lot to do with the actual plot. She delivers some fan service in the shower, but unlike AG and Ryo's predecessor, Shogo and Yui, there's no steamy sex. This pair of OVAs doesn't do much to develop Ryo's personality or her relationship to AG. AG goes to work for the EX Corporation, but Orange doesn't give up on him. The leaders of these corporations have hidden agendas of their own. One wants to revive the original EVE program from the old Megazone, and the other wants to take over the city's core system for its own end. This corporate rivalry will soon leave the networks and head for the city streets, as Orange has developed a mechanical soldier of their own, and EX will resurrect the Garland superbike design from that first OVA. Soon they'll be making real explosions on the city streets instead of in virtual video games. There isn't the same conspiracy mystery for Eiji to unravel as Shogo is faced within the first OVA. We learn that both corporations are planning something strange because we see their leaders plotting ominously behind the scenes, but Eiji is oblivious until they actually put those plans into operation. Megazone 23 Part 3 was made as two separately released OVAs. It has two co-directors. Kenichi Yadagai led the first part, Shinji Aramaki, who more recently directed the CGI Appleseed and Ex Machina OVAs, directed the second half. The first half takes it a little more slowly, does the exposition, and is better organized. The second half delivers more action, but the plot gets a bit muddled. When the original Eve persona finally awakens, she takes a liking to Eiji and trusts him as her new partner a little too quickly. I hope the two of them do a better job at saving the city than he did with Shoujo. Neither half of Part 3 has the same quality of fluid animation as the original OVA. As time went on, most OVAs had smaller budgets to compete in a more crowded marketplace. Yadagai prefers a reduced frame rate for his action scenes in the first half, and Aramaki prefers simpler action and stills in the second. I give Megazone 2-3, Part 3, three stars. It's better than Part 2, but it never really engages with the characters, and the plot seems... Well, partly a rehash of what the original was without all the mystery. So, to sum up Megazone 2-3, the original was a landmark OVA from the early days of home video. It provided a story length between a TV series and a movie, with animation quality better than a television series, and sexual contact that wouldn't have been appropriate on 80s broadcast TV. It wasn't really conceived of as a longer story, and its sequels were made two and four years after the original. Although the sequels don't stand well on their own, they don't match either the visual or storytelling style of the original OVA. Personally, I think once you've seen the first part, you could just as well stop. By the way, this isn't the only OVA set that AIC created by corporate committee, with different creative staff, story ideas, and designs thrown in randomly along the way. In the 80s, they also began their Bubblegum Crisis OVA series, which had a similar staff turnover, delays, and ultimately collapse in contractual disputes. Thanks for watching.